today we're going to take a look at the build tack print surface. We're going to try that out with quite a few different filaments and then compare some of those results to how those same filaments work on print bite. It's going to be just an overview. This is new to me with the build tack, but I've used print bite a lot before. So I want to see just initially how they compare and then it would be maybe a future video that I can go a little bit more in detail on any results that seem kind of interesting or ambiguous. Now the website for build tack is saying that supposedly you need to use uh, a glue stick with nylon and tea glaze to get it to stick but that's not gonna happen so I'm just gonna see how that works without the glue stick to install the build tack I'm just cleaning off a nice new sheet of glass peeling off that backing and then I'm gonna stick it down now the goal is to not get air bubbles I thought I was doing pretty well with that from the angle I was looking at based on where the camera was it ended up I did have a few bubbles so make sure when you're installing it that you have kind of an overhead view with good lighting to make sure that you can see immediately if you're starting to get a bubble and catch it before it gets too bad because once it's all the way down it's a little bit too late all you can do is kind of maybe poke the hole and try to get the air out <laughs> but it worked well enough to proceed with the test so that's the important part here so I'm just cleaning it off now it's been sitting on a shelf for a while so it actually got pretty dusty while waiting for its turn to be tested I'm just kind of blowing off any little fibers from the paper towel with some compressed air. The first filament I'm going to try is Isan Petji, and I've used this a few times. It's not one that I use a lot, but it's an okay filament, so I think it's going to be interesting to see how it works on here. I'm just starting out at 80 bed because I've had trouble with Petji, you know, needing a pretty hot bed to stick with the print bite. So I'm just kind of figuring it's probably similar, but I guess we'll find out. I'm doing it at a 0.2 initial layer height, which is the default based on my 0.2 overall layer height, and we'll see how that sticks. The first layer generally looks pretty good on anything, so it's can't really tell a whole lot from that. The selection of file on this, it's really just because I've experienced this peeling previously on print bite. So I know that there is the potential for something to peel off the bed if it's not stuck well. So it's a pretty decent test piece in that way and also prints quite fast because, you know, you don't want to do this super long print when you're just experimenting with something. So it's staying stuck down quite fine. I'm not seeing any peeling. In fact, I think that maybe the 80 bed was a bad idea because this really doesn't want to come off. <laughs> Just trying to pry it up with a few different types of spatulas to see if I could get it out without causing too much damage. I did end up taking a few chunks out, but I did get it off. Now, this definitely has no element of self-release for this. Even once it's all the way cooled down, it's really well bonded. So I tried changing it to a 0.1 initial layer height to see if that would be okay. But it was definitely too high. So 0.1 doesn't work. 0.15 might work for that initial layer height. Obviously, that's also going to depend on the leveling of your bed as to exactly how it behaves with your initial layer height. But overall, I think that might be a better option. I'm trying it now with the bed a little bit cooler to see if I can get a little bit more of a reasonable level of effort to get it off the bed. But it still is pretty well stuck down. Now this spatula is not quite as good as another one I had. It's a little bit too thick. I like the thin ones because you can kind of squeeze them under there a little bit, but my handle on that one's pretty broken, so I was trying a different one less successfully. So a little bit of a chip on the corner, not too bad. I think that the results of that are that, yes, the Petchy sticks really well. You just got to kind of fine tune your settings to find the right amount of stick for the print that you're doing. Because if you're doing something that has, you know, a small surface area that's on the bed, you'd obviously want that to stick really, really well. But if you're doing something that's got a fairly large flat area like this test piece that I'm using, you don't want it to stick too much because then it's just unnecessary effort and potential damage to the piece to get it off. We're switching over to print bite now to compare it with that same filament. I'm using 80 build plate temp. I know that works from other experiments I've done on print bite because like I said I've been using that for a while. I didn't do a brim because I'm just trying to eliminate some variables here and just keep it pretty simple. Now I <laughs> tried sticking with the 50 bed temp for the first test on this and that was a bad idea. It really does need the 80 for print bite. I normally would probably also maybe do a brim just to make it easier to get off or if I'm having any trouble with edges curling. But like I said, I want to just kind of keep the variables limited here. So I'm just going to try it. It's still hot. So it's still stuck on there really well while it's hot. But let's see what happens now that it's cool. It's still, f oh, well, it still felt stuck on, but it just pops right off. It does release. And you can see the comparison here. The shiny one is from the print bite and the more dull textured 
back is from the build tack. So that's the difference in the surface finish that it provides to the back of the piece. The next filament I want to try is glass fiber reinforced PETG from 3DX Tech. I like this filament because it does an interesting sort of texture to it. I'm working on some police public call box pieces right now that'll be in a future video that's with the blue version of this filament. It's just a really pretty filament too. So I want to see how that works with build tack because it does work well with print bite. I usually would do 80 bed temp and a brim. But let's just see what happens here with no brim again, keeping our test file fairly consistent. I'm going to try it at 40 bed temp now because that petchy was still stuck really well with the last one. So this might be similar. No, that stuck really well still. So with petchy, it's very easy to get it to adhere to the build tack with just a little bit of heat. It's still leaving some bits that are kind of really stuck on there, but not nearly so bad as the first trials. So I'm just going to dust that off with a paper towel and I'm going to try it with 0.15 initial layer height instead of, I think that was on 0.3 for the last one. It was still stuck on a little bit too well. So mm, yeah, I would say that's pretty okay. Now I would want to fine tune that and do some more extensive testing if I was using this for a real project. But for now, I think that's good enough. It works great with a little bit of heat. No big deal. And I'm not going to bother showing that one on print bite because I've got another video coming up soon where I'm going to be doing exactly that using the glass fiber reinforced petchy on print bite. Let's move on to tea glaze, which supposedly needs glue stick to stick, which I don't really know why you would want to still be using glue stick if you've gone to the trouble of buying a specialized print surface. So I just want to see what happens without. I don't see any reason it shouldn't stick here and it, wow, okay. So definitely no adhesion issues here. It was really, really difficult to get off. I had to just get the camera out of the way, get in there with both hands in order to get that one off. And I still did take a little tiny chip out of it. So that was too much heat. There's still all these bits stuck onto the build tack. So there was no need for it to be that hot. And there's certainly no need for glue stick here. I'm gonna put the bed temp down to 30 just to see what happens and see if it still sticks. Because now I'm curious, does this even need a heated bed? <laughs> We're getting pretty close to room temperature at this point, And that's still stuck just fine. There was no peeling. And you can see it's a pretty decent amount of work to get that thing off. So I'm going to do just one more test for curiosity's sake. Does tea glaze work on build tech at room temperature? So I'm just going to put that down below what my room temperature is and just kind of see what happens here on a cold bed. <laughs> By the time it was finished, you know, it had started curling just ever so slightly out to the edges. You could see where it was darker in the center than at the edges. So I would say it's better with just a little bit of heat, but for something small, you can get away with not having a heated bed with the build tack for the tea glaze. It's very interesting. That's another one that I'm not going to go test on print bite for this video because I've done it so much before. You can go check out the actual spinner video that this file is from or just previous reviews of print bite. Let's now switch over to another filament by 3DX Tech. This is Ion Nylon Alloy, which is quite the mouthful to say. And the settings I'm going to use are no fan, obviously, and I'm going to try it at 50 bed temp just to see what happens. Since it was sticking so well with the Petchy at 50, I just want to kind of compare that. But I'm kicking the nozzle temp up to 255 for this, for the nylon. We need a little bit more heat. And it seems to be sticking pretty well, even at 50. Although I'm not so sure how that's going to work by the time it finishes the print, it does look like it's starting to curl at those edges. So 50 is not hot enough, but there's plenty of room to kick that temp up. And if necessary, we could even add a brim to help it stick a little bit better. But I'm trying to avoid that in that test. There's too many variables. So that comes off a little bit too easily for sure. But even that little skirt there is stuck on fairly well, so there's definitely potential here. It's left quite a bit of residue on the bed that I guess will have to be cleaned off, which is a little bit annoying. We're going to kick that bed temp up to 80 for the next test. See if we get a little bit of a better result. So definitely too early to tell early on, but by the time we get to the end here, I would say that's pretty well stuck. There was just a still a tiny bit of a curl at one end which made it nice and easy to get the spatula under, but we definitely don't want a curled part. For build tack, that's fine for this overview test. There's definitely decent potential there for this nylon to work on that surface. 
We can maybe just increase the initial layer height, add a little bit more heat, add a brim. There's other things we could do to test that further, but we need to move on at this point. We're going to go ahead and try the same filament on print bite now. For print bite, I'm just going straight up to 80 bed and I'm also going to switch to the 0.3 layer height because I think it's even less sticky to the print bite than to the build tech most likely. Seems to be kind of how things are going. It appears that those settings with the print bite still weren't quite enough. This is coming off too easily for my liking. It does look like it curled out to the edges and was mostly just stuck in the center, although it did complete the print pretty well. You can compare the backs of these two again. With the print bite, you get a much shinier surface. And with the build tack, it's more of a matte surface with a very slight texture to it. With regards to that nylon, I think both of them need a little bit more work to see if it's possible to get them to stick well enough to do especially a larger print than these little tester spinner pieces, but there is potential. Let's move on to another nylon filament. We're going to do Bridge Nylon by Tolman, and this one has been just sitting out for a while, so you can definitely see that it's absorbed some moisture, some steam coming out. It's actually kind of cool, but I think it's going to be okay. And I've got this at the 80 bed temp, 0.3 initial layer height, and let's see how that works. And sure enough, yeah, that just popped off. So. That was no good with those settings. Let's try those same settings on the print bite just to see how it goes. I don't have a whole lot of hope. And sure enough, there's all that warping going on. It's not adhering at all. By the time it gets to what, maybe a third of the way through, now it's completely disconnected. Woohoo! We're just making some really dark colored spaghetti here. Ew, nasty. And that's that. So <laughs> with the 80 bed and no brim, it's a no-go on either surface. However, let's go ahead and take this one step further for this filament since it didn't work with either print surface. We're going to go ahead and add a brim and also bump the build plate temperature up to 90. Well, that makes all the difference. It's actually stuck quite well now. <laughs> so that's that. It's a uh, problem solved. We just needed to take some further measures to assist with the adhesion and I'm guessing this would probably stick just fine on the build tack also with these additional settings. I'm not going to try it right now because we do still have two more filaments to try on both of these surfaces. So you can see that this stuck well. It's a decent amount of effort to get it off and it's all flat and level. Does just now need the extra step of removing the brim if you're going to actually be using this piece. We're going to jump into polycarbonate. This is Polymaker PC Plus. We're going to start out on the build tech with cooling fan on. We'll try it with that and also just back down to the 80 temperature and no brim back to our standard settings. I'm going to do it at the 0.3 initial layer height though because I'm pretty sure this is going to have a bit of a hard time sticking. First test is looking pretty good. I'm not sure about those cooling fans though. I think that that is some severe layer separation going on there, so we probably need to just kill the fan for this because that's no good if those layers aren't bonded. However, to the print surface, it's looking quite good, except for this one corner where the piece was overlapping where the nylon had been used. So that was not properly cleaned and it only didn't stick in that area. So I don't think that was the build tax fault. We'll just put that in a different spot and try again. It's just curled in that one little corner but those layers severely separated. So that's no good. We're gonna take the fan off for the next test. We're gonna move it over to a different spot on the print bed and we're good to go. And that is nicely bonded. A pretty decent amount of work to get it off. So I like that it's stuck on well. And I think that would even work for a larger part that maybe was taller and needed a little bit of an extra stickiness to that surface. That was a good result. I'm going to try to see if it's repeatable though. So I'm just going to clean that spot off a little bit and do exactly the same thing in exactly the same spot. And sure enough, it's stuck. In fact, I think it's stuck even a little bit better the second time around, oddly enough. So I would say that is a good surface for polycarbonate. There's a little bit of residue left on there, but really not too much and nothing to scrape off, which is quite nice. Let's try those same settings on the print bite. The first layer is going down nicely, but a few minutes in, I left it on its own and then came back to this. It's a very nice blob. The backside surface, though, does look really nice and shiny on that print bite, but it's no good if the rest of the piece can't be printed. You know, it's possible if we add the brim and whatnot, you can make it work, but that's too in-depth for this test. We still have one more filament to go, so let's go ahead and move over to flexible filament. We're going to be working with Cheetah, which is my favorite filament right now, and I use this a lot on Printbite. 
we got to turn off that heat bed completely because the flexible filaments tend to get highly overstuck. Cheat is a little bit better for sure than Ninja Flex or even Semi Flex for getting off the bed, but it still can get pretty stuck on, so no heat. I'm also going to put that initial layer height back down a little bit lower because we don't need the extra extrusion to make it stick. It's going to stick just fine and then some. It's a very nice piece. It prints beautifully every time in Cheetah. It's a very high quality printing filament. The pieces end up looking quite smooth with no prep work after, but you can also sand it if you need to. You can see this stuck very well. It is a bit of a chore to get an edge pried up so you can kind of squeeze under and get the whole thing off the bed. This is similar to print bite, but I think it's actually a little bit harder. So same with everything, there's just more adhesion with the build tack, but you don't have the self-releasing for some of the filaments and the flexible filament is just a little bit too hard to get off. We're going to try those same settings on print bite back to my old favorite combo here with the cheetah and the print bite. And you'll see this just comes off very nicely. Slide the knife under a corner and it all comes up pretty easily without causing damage to the part and without too much work. Build tack and print bite are both good surfaces, so it's really up to you as to what your favorite filament is and which strengths are most important to you. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that it helps you to get a little bit of a start on deciding what print surface might be best for you and gives you some ideas as to some further testing. I will also put some links below for the print surfaces and the filaments that I used here in case you want any more info on that. If you haven't already subscribed and you liked this video, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you do want to get some notifications anytime I post a video, you can also click the bell. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.